it's finally time for Astra to take on its most ambitious testing of the Phoenix vehicle. This, of course, is the testing of our propulsion system. Just for a bit of background, Phoenix is the rocket that we're planning to launch this year in America. It's powered by a hybrid engine which uses nitrous oxide and paraffin wax, but if we're building it ourselves, we kind of have to make sure that it works. So, this is what brings us to the test facility in Lampelshausen, Germany. So right now we're doing an overall systems check and we have to check if all the electrical systems are still working, we rainproof them and we just have to make sure they are actually still okay. Because we have to fill a liquid, which is nitrous oxide, into our rocket in order to have combustion, we actually need to have a bunch of valves which control the filling process and also make sure that the tank is safe to operate. This is the primary responsibility of the ground system. If you want to know more about that, check out our video that we did previously on this topic. Oh, Junge, das Wohnwort an, aus, an, aus. Three, two, one. Well, I'm trying to figure out the sensors today for the test, and this is the software that we're using right now. It's called Key Studio, or I don't know how to pronounce it, maybe Kai Studio. So all the sensors are connected, and we just have to put them uh, into the our combustion chamber. Everything else is connected, and I'm waiting for the others. The sensors are extremely important for this test because there are three key metrics that our engine has to hit in order to make our altitude target work. The goal is for Phoenix to reach an altitude of 9 kilometers, and to do that we need to achieve 6 kilonewtons of thrust with a specific impulse of 200 seconds for a burn duration of around 8 seconds. The sensors that we have strapped to our test stand are going to be able to confirm whether we actually reach those metrics. Well, that was just incredible. I mean, for lighting up the engine for the first time, this is not looking that bad. But after a deeper look into the data, we noticed that we weren't quite reaching the 6 kilonewtons that our target was. Furthermore, the specific impulse of the engine, which is just a measure of how efficient the engine burns, was also looking quite low. So we are taking apart the motor now, and because we want to see what the results from our first what fire are. Top, yeah, exactly. Yep, and it's almost out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oof. It definitely got behind the. So it definitely got behind the insulation. What are you guys finding out? Uh, I do. This is uh, nothing yet. <laughs> I oh think that we burned like a decent amount. You can see though here. Oh yeah, it erodes it. Hardcore. So we. But it's thick, man. I mean, yeah, it's, fine. it's still fine. It's still fine. No, I'm just saying, it's, it's like for another it's eroding it like actually more than I would have expected. And for four seconds, it just didn't take away so much fuel grain. I mean, we're surprised. Like, I mean, there's a lot in there. It, there's enough fuel grain in there for a full burn. So, yeah. And there's a lot in the post combustion chamber. As far as we could tell, there wasn't any major damage to the rocket system over the course of that four second burn. So we thought we're going to tackle the first challenge of trying to get to the full 8 seconds first 
and then start tweaking our efficiency so that we can get our higher thrust and higher specific impulse that we need to make the rocket work. So in the afternoon of that very same day, we set up the engine again and got ready for our second hot fire test. This time for a full duration of eight seconds. Okay, Astra, hot fire two, full duration burning. Five, four, three, two, one. The Phoenix engine is clearly able to handle the rigor of a full duration burn, so this is really good news. But unfortunately, just as with the first test, we're still not getting the specific impulse and the thrust that we're looking for in order to make it to our altitude goal. But how are we measuring the force that comes out of our engine? As with previous testing, we actually still just have some force sensors which are squeezed between the bulkhead of our combustion chamber and a plate which is attached to the thrust stand. All of the force that the engine produces will go through these sensors, allowing them to measure the total thrust output. From a combination of this thrust value and the mass flow that we're getting through the engine, we're able to back calculate what our specific impulse is, which is just the efficiency of the engine, and of course the total thrust output. Measuring the flow coming out of our tank is not a trivial task, but of course being Astra, we have a bit of a hacky way of dealing with that. To solve this, we just put our oxidizer tank on top of a scale that we could actually measure for the full duration of the burn. This way, we have a reasonably accurate way of measuring the nitrous oxide that leaves the tank during the entire burn. The next day, we were able to introduce the first variable, which could increase the thrust and the specific impulse of our engine. And that is temperature. Nitrous oxide exists in two phases inside of the tank, so the temperature of the ambient environment is actually really important. So obviously we were interested in how this might affect our burn. Astra, hot fire three, and five, four, three, two, one. tearing down after our last hot fire here and we noticed the problem we had a bit of a nozzle uh, failure not necessarily a failure but a maybe a hiccup at the end basically what we think is happening is that the oxidizer to fuel ratio is quite high so we're getting a lot of uh, corrosion and how do you say uh, like basically the flow is eating away at the edge of the nozzle and it burns through in some places and then you have some spots where there's no more nozzle. So uh, yeah, we'll have to figure out what the heck's going on with that and if there's a way we can mitigate it. Uh, it doesn't really affect the thrust very much though because it only happens at the very end of our burn. We have a relatively short burn. So maybe in the end it doesn't really matter, but it kind of sucks for us because that part costs like 300 euros to make. So you have to have a new part every time that kind of sucks. The reason for that high oxidizer to fuel ratio actually has to do with the variable we changed for this test, which was the temperature of the nitrous oxide. At lower temperatures, nitrous oxide has a slightly higher density, which means that more mass flows through the injector than would otherwise be expected. The end result of this is a slightly higher oxidizer to fuel ratio, which causes unburnt oxygen reaching our nozzle and causing a bit of erosion. 
On top of the issue of our eroding nozzle, we also once again had not enough thrust and total impulse to make our vehicle work. And so it was necessary for us to come up with a clever solution in order to meet our propulsion goals. We are manufacturing a vortex plate. So the idea is that you want there to be turbulence inside of the post combustion chamber in order to get more mixing of the paraffin wax and the nitrous oxide. So to do that, we're just making a cross looking thing, which should generate a little bit of turbulence in the post combustion chamber and increase our efficiency. So right now we're just cutting down the stock and then they're gonna do some milling to make the shape in the middle. Uh, yeah. There's also an additional theoretical added benefit of the vortex plate, which is that it should induce more mixing of paraffin wax with oxidizer in the post combustion chamber. Essentially, this means that we should reduce the effective oxidizer to fuel ratio that's reaching our nozzle surface. So we should actually get more thrust and potentially less nozzle erosion, if this works correctly. With the vortex plate added to our system, we are ready to go on for another test. Everything's recording? Are you recording? Okay. Then, Astra, hot fire four in three, two, one. I think the improved performance actually made it worse. <laughs> Potentially. Um, it might also be because Which we have sense, the like, little lip after the graphite insert. Maybe uh, there is some like flow detachment there. And then it gets... Uh, it isn't a proper laminar flow in the there, bottom there, of the nozzle There's no lip there. It, once it gets pressed in with the pressure, there's no lip. Well, it Look. was before we... Well, that was a bit of a spicy hot fire. Despite once again seeing our nozzle getting eaten up, at the end of the burn, we did have some positive outcomes from this test. It turns out that we actually were able to get a full duration burn and also able to get a burn that was very close to our thrust goal, about 5.8 kilonewtons. Furthermore, the specific impulse of our burn was also above 200 seconds for about two or three seconds of the burn. This means that our vortex plate is actually adding a lot more efficiency to our engine. We've taken apart the combustion chamber after the last burn. The most interesting part of it this time was our vortex plate. Uh, it has been destroyed, so it was just made out of Pertinax. Of course it erodes, so we lost the center part of it. We think that it did its job for most of it because we actually did get improved performance. We still need to go over the data to know exactly how much that was, but it looks like it might have been more than 5%, so really good for such a simple little addition. Yeah, we might fuck up the nozzle, we might fuck up the valve. Then we don't have a you have approved Vortex plate set up now, I guess. Well, we did get a nice burn last time. But can we, if we have to get two in the same setup, right? So uh, how does it work? We I would do just have say a short we're getting another one. So we should just go to eight and a half seconds again, right? Yeah. I'll see. It would be nice to see it, what happens if you actually do a full blow. But does, does, does it count with the cutoff nozzle though? Yeah, that as well. Yeah. As long as it hopefully does provide similar thrust. Why but it's not assuming, wait, wait, wait. Assuming that it's, the nozzle is going to get fucked up anyway, we should go for a full blow. After some discussion, we decided that for the next burn, that instead of closing the valve once the liquid phase of the nitrous oxide flow is over, we would instead close the valve much, much later when all the nitrous oxide, even the gas, has been exhausted from our tank. This means that we expect there to be two different phases in the thrust profile of our engine. The first eight seconds should be really powerful, coming up to about six kilonewtons. And then once all of the liquid nitrous oxide is exhausted out of the tank, there is still a whole bunch of pressurized gas. And that should keep the engine running, albeit at a much lower thrust, but 
potentially enough that it could give us that extra little bit of kick that we need in order to get all the way up to nine kilometers. I just want to go quickly through the, all the parts that we use. Um, this part here is the nozzle assembly side. So we have the nozzle right here, which is already quite used up. That is also another reason why this is our last um, hot fire. So this is then mounted to the nozzle mount that connects also to the casing. The no on the nozzle mount sits um, an insulation piece that insulates the nozzle. And inside of this is also a graphite insert that will um, protect the throat. Then we have on top of that our post combustion chamber. And on top of the post combustion chamber we have our vortex plate. And yeah. So on top of this would then come the fuel grain and around of all of that the fuel grain liner, um, which would just slide up to here and seal off on this on this O-ring. On the top side we have then the uh, middle bulkhead right here that also has uh, holes right here for the casing and uh, in the seal to seal with the liner. And it is also protected by an insulation that has also been, as you can see, very used. We have used it for every single hot fire and has it has held up very nicely. Um, yeah, this also houses the injector plate, th which you can see right here, which is very dirty right now, but yeah, that is okay. And then on the test on the test uh, stand, we will connect this right here to our uh, filling assembly. Yeah, now we want to assemble everything one last time. You see a professional loop dispenser. Yes. I have I, 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 I have I have the uh drawings for them. Okay, you can do it. Astro five in five, four, three, two, one. As you can see, this burn worked very much the same way that we expected it to. There was a clear 8 second phase where we had liquid flow of nitrous oxide into our combustion chamber, followed by a phase of 7 seconds for which there was a gaseous phase of nitrous oxide flowing. It's really cool how there is such a stark difference between the flame behavior in both of these regimes. Right here, we got to like 6.5. This is averaged. Actually, yeah. the peak was 7.4. Yeah. An even happier result of this propulsion test is that we actually happen to reach our thrust target of over 6 kilonewtons. In addition, our efficiency was also quite good as we averaged over 200 seconds for the entire liquid phase of the burn. This means that our engine is officially ready to fly. So if you're excited to see this engine take flight, be sure to subscribe because we'll be posting a video on that very soon. And remember to expand your horizons.